because they've all been Tchaikovsky, Piazzolla, <laughs> and you know, like all their their bottom from four seasons, yeah. all of them have been composed. Yeah, like yeah, Neil yeah, Young, yeah, 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 Harvest Moon, um, Biles, and Neil Young. A little yeah, maple leaf rag, maple leaf rag, and some McDowell. That's all. That's all homorhythmic, right? I'd rather it be up. talking about I yeah. guess music, music as it relates to my life. <laughs> yeah. um, you know I mean it's always been a big part of it and I think people always identify really strongly with whatever music they listen to especially I think that's a recent phenomenon but I, I think it continues I mean growing up you know there were the like for me it was like the ska kids or the rap kids or like the heavy metal kid you know the, the death metal kids you know everyone identifies themselves through their music um, so I mean that was that was part of what music meant to me you know I was when I was at various points you know I went through the, the ska scene the death metal scene the punk rock scene the, the rave scene you know and all that music has stuck with me um, classical music was just kind of uh, it was just a challenge it was it was always there it was a night you know it was a neat endeavor it was something that got me some recognition and, and I enjoyed it I had to quit playing. So I finally went to a doctor and got a diagnosis of what they call focal dystonia which is a neurological condition. It um, affects fine motor neurons. So, and f usually it's, a, it's like, they don't know why it happens or what predisposes you to it particularly, but it usually has to do with, with a repetitive activity or something that you've focused really finely. So for example, violinists will get it in their hand and usually it manifests as when you activate whatever, and it's really specific. So like for a violinist, it might be when they put their hand in the playing position, there it'll just clench. Like all the, all the muscles just fire. And it's a neurological thing, like the, the paths just get crossed in the brain. Dystonia, a neurological movement condition in which repetitive, sustained muscle contractions cause abnormal postures. Dystonia can be caused by genetics, trauma, or repetitive, high-precision tasks. Individuals who perform these repetitive, high-precision tasks include musicians, engineers, architects, and artists. Symptoms include pain similar to restless leg syndrome, cramping, and involuntary muscle spasms. Individuals who do not seek professional help and continue to repeat a specific high-precision task are at risk of muscular deformity, i.e., Focal hand dystonia, also known as writer's cramp, cervical dystonia, which can be found in violinist's neck position, and Meja syndrome, whose symptoms include a sustained pursing and tightening of the lips. So something similar happened with my lips. So every time, you know, I mean, it got at its worst, or at its worst, worst, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'd, put, I'd just put the mouthpiece on my lips and my whole face would just shake. You know, it's because the muscles would just clench and then, you know, fight each other. So did you have to change your instrument? Uh, I had to quit playing. 
I, I fought with it for a couple of years and finally just, you know, the, the prognosis wasn't good. You know, at the time I was just starting a career and I was actually fairly successful and fairly busy and, you know, for considering how young I was and how long I'd been living in D.C., but I cried a lot, you know, when it first happened. <laughs> no, I mean, it was horrible. It was horribly depressing. It was like everything I'd defined myself as and wanted to be was suddenly taken away. I still have trouble when I play. Like, I switched to trombone, but I still play quite a bit of alto horn, and, and now I play alto trumpet in this Balkan band, which is, the mouthpiece is bigger than the horn mouthpiece, but it's similar enough I have to be very careful. Oh, four, four bars before that, start slow. Composing helped me a lot. Yeah, I, I was just getting into composing at, the, at that time. And it gave me something to focus on, and, you know, something else musical. You know, I had all this musical knowledge and all this training, and like now it was, what am I going to do with it? So, so yeah, I spent a lot of time composing and realized if there's any worse way to make a living than performing, it's writing the music. So I started arranging tunes here and there for the first for the brass quintet we tried to do a couple and then uh, with the Mercury Season group we would do a couple and they went over they always went over really well you know if I could get the performers to learn them because they're usually fast and hard and odd meters and so we just kind of kept doing that and then eventually I was like well why don't I see I kind of knew enough of the right people and I met Richie our drummer and I sort of I didn't think he'd have any interest in it, but I was like, well, let's, hey, you want to play in this Balkan-style brass band, you know, it's going to be a lot of weird meters, and he's like, sure, why not, and so I just happened to know the right people at the time, and we got together and rehearsed for a summer and played a couple shows, and I had no idea what the reaction would be. Um, 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 um. 